Gosh, she won't. Oh, hi. We're down here at the beach, and uh, Marie is making some sandcastles. And I, I told her that big wave's going to come in. She's going to get wet. She says, just a minute, Uncle Buck. I'll be finished in a minute. That's the tenacity that she has. This little gal, four and a half years old at the beach, I remember one day my wife and I were going down walking. It wasn't on the beach. It was right above the beach, this park. It's a mile and a half around. We go around it three times in an hour. That's fast walking. And Marie says, Aunt Carolyn, Uncle Buck, I want to go with you. Oh, you can't do that, Marie. You can't keep up. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Well, finally back and forth, and she did. She dragged, she crawled, but she made it. And that same spirit will keep Marie making sandcastles until she's finished. And then she'll come on in. And I think, what an important attribute. If we can apply that in our painting with the tenacity to go towards it, forget failure. Go for it. If somebody says, oh, you can't do that. You've never done that before. You've never painted that before. I'm going to do it anyway. When they say you can't, say, I'll do it anyway. Stay with us. We're going to go to sand castles, and I'll show you what we're going to do from the palette to the brushes to the canvas. Let's look at the uh, palette first. We have these laid out so you'll be able to see how they're used in sequence. The foam is black and white. That's a thalo blue, ivory black, equal parts, added into white. This will also be used on the shovel just a little bit, but it's basically the uh, water and the shadow foam. The same color with less white, blue and black, and that becomes some of the shadows under the big wave and some of the water in the wave. Then we have the sand, which I was starting to put on while you joined me. Burn number and white. Isn't that nice? Hair, yellow ochre and raw umber. And we'll push this around and I'll explain a little bit how we're going to make use of the um, canvas as we use this color, which is kind of golden, with, with Marie being a little towards blondish red, redhead. Then the highlights in the hair, I have ochre and white with some red in it. And that's sort of dark, so there's not much white chunk of red on the way by. I don't know where we'll use you. Maybe for a little tinting of the flesh. We come down yellow ochre and white. We'll use this for the highlights on the foam and we'll also use it for the light part of the bathing suit. Oh, I know what that red's for when we put little hearts on the suit. Thank you for being there. Okay, coming back over here. Yellow ochre and white with a little bit of a alizarin and a touch of burnt umber. That's going to be for the uh, light flesh color and then we'll come over to the dark flesh color, which is yellow ochre and alizarin, a little white, and just flavor it with uh, burnt umber. Coming over to the shadow of the suit, black and blue and white. That's the same thing we used for the water, but then you add quite a bit of alizarin crimson into it. That's the shadow of the suit. Okay, let's look at the brushes. I'll, I'll lay one down that I've been using. We'll start from the right side this time. We have the one inch brush. We have, we have to start over, I guess it didn't fully. Okay, we have the mop brush, he gets even. Flat sable, look at the nice bunny brush. Love the color, love what it does. Round brush, we'll be able to use this around careful areas on the nose and on the fingers. Large sable brush. Uh, the bristle fan, that's used quite a bit for patting the sand on as a finale and also for putting the uh, highlight on the foam. And twiggy brushes, what do we use those for? Oh, the little ends of the hair, we'll certainly need those. We'll come up to the canvas and show you what we have started. <clears throat> this is primed with acrylic. It's cadmium red light and white. And of course it's dry since it's acrylic. A drawing was put on. And uh, once we have that on, the drawing on. And then I started with a little bit of the blue, black, and white to get around the hair. This will save us time. And also, when we put the hair in, we can work into the wet paint the little loose hairs, and then that's done, uh, putting the background on first. We have uh, sand started. So this gives us a chance now. We'll go uh, and do sand castles with Marie building them. You know they're going to be sound. Okay, I was using some of the clear, which uh, some of the medium over here, we'll put it right there. We better move the sunglasses a little bit. This is a burn number in white. We're using the one-inch brush, so I have a little medium on that. This comes up, wham, against this. Now, when we get to the hair, I'll explain a little bit how we're using the background more, but you can see even on this application that some of the red is showing through. It's meant to show through. It gives a vitality to the colors. You make it feel like it's a very sunny day at the beach. Push this around very quickly. If you happen to hit the easel, that's right. You can 
clean it later, but right now you're going after your objective. I push this on, and I can see where the um, lines still are, the pencil lines, so when I need to put a shadow on, that it'll be possible to do it. Let's go ahead and just fill in the background, and the reason I'm doing that is to get more of the pink uh, gone, so that when we start putting on the flesh, it's a little easier to judge it, being the only uh, bright color around. So I'll clean the bunny brush, <laughs> clean the bunny brush, we'll clean the one inch brush, so we're still going to use a one inch brush. This is my foam, the black and blue and white. I suppose just a little bit of medium will help spread this around a little more than a dry brush would. Although that, that's fairly dry, has some medium. Here we go. Push this hard. How much of the background do you show through here? Well, once we get this on, I'll show you. We'll kind of wipe a little bit to smooth the paint around and to remove the excess. So you do uh, want some of the underneath to show through. And it's surprising when you take a color, let me just show you right here. I put this all over. When I just take and go like that, see the difference between this and this? It's just the difference in quantity. Okay, we push this down. Touching against the, uh, close to the hair. You might note that I've put just a little bit of the uh, yellow ochre and white in close to the head because I'm going to have to have a light there anyway. So I put it right as we start. Before we start, you didn't even see it, right? Okay. Here we come back up, splash this around. And I do have lines up there that I'll find more so as I push this around. You, you watch as you do this. If you use less medium, if you use more of a dry brush, then you push uh, a little harder. If it's quite wet, then you have to go more gently or you'll remove too much of it. See, I can sort of see the lines right there. I, I, you can trust me because uh, they're there. They're, and what I'm saying is you do it so you really can see yours. Okay, let's take a little bit of the dark color. I'm taking a uh, sable brush. This is a dark water, blue-black. And we'll take and come right under for some shadows along here. Push that in. And notice as I put this on, I'm trying to get a little bit of a feeling of character above. See how this water's kind of moving? And that's by cutting away with the dark color as we do this. And then with less paint on the brush, sort of float down so it won't look quite as dark. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And that's right close, where's the line? There it is. Right close in there. Whenever you put lines that uh, strike against the head or the body, soften a little bit where they meet the head and then it'll appear as the uh, person is in front. It detaches, that's the word we'll use. It detaches from the background. Okay, now I have a little bit of uh, dark here, but I may find, yes, I'll find it'd be better to do that after we put the highlight on and then we'll pull that into the dark water. Okay, so we're ready now then to go ahead, let's go right to the hair, and what should we put on that? Let's take uh, the same sable brush, I'll clean the bunny. I don't know why you have the name bunny today. You're a one inch. This is the bunny. Okay, this is the one inch. We were using the one inch. We cleaned the one inch. Now we come with the sable brush. The sable brush is picking up dry brush, umber and ochre. And that's yellow ochre when I say ochre. Push this up and you push sort of a uh, hard dry brush push right up into the hair meeting the uh, water area. Why don't I just say push up and touch the water? That's the same thing, right? You're going to find that as you blend a little bit on this, which I'll do by wiping with a paper towel, that you get a nice feeling on what's coming through. And this will also help in the flesh. So you will wipe a little bit there and it gives us a feeling of form. The light is coming from where? Well, it'll come from the top right. So knowing where this was filmed, it's getting on in the afternoon, probably about two o'clock. Okay, now all we have at this time is sort of a uh, helmet, and we have to put a little character on it to make it loose and airy. I'll pick up two brushes. I have the uh, fan brush and a twiggy brush. With each, I'll come down to the hair color, put just a little bit on this. This is also dry. 
However, with the twiggy, we'll put just a little medium on that so we can make small little lines. Okay, we'll take these both up. Eat your heart out, Lowell Spears. No, I won't do both at once. We'll take one at a time. Okay, since we have the little highlight there, we can kind of splash up a little bit. See, kind of curve with the fan brush, and then watch what happens when I get down here. Before that happens, let's just soften that so we got kind of mushy, and we have hardness goodbye. Okay, now we come down. Come down. See the little loose hairs? And the same thing with the twiggy, we'll make emphasize this, and we might even have to come back and do some of this when we get a little more highlights on, but with the twiggy, you're coming the same direction and the same area, but you just go out a little past, but it feels like it belongs to that clump of hair. Isn't that, doesn't that express a lot, the feeling for that independent spirit of Marie? Okay, with the hair, we'll come back with the same uh, fan brush, and we'll come over to the light of uh, the hair. This is yellow ochre and white with a little red. And this is going to go on just a slight little drag stroke. I don't know what kind of stroke you call that. It's just the opposite of a comma. There must be a word for that, which <clears throat> hasn't been discovered yet. Okay, here we come up to the canvas. Go the same way the direction of the hair is flowing. There we go. Isn't that pretty? And then, just a little lighter, but I'll use the same color. I'll just run down quickly, stay where you are. Same color, but now quantity. Just a chunk right there. And I'll also put a little bit just on the edge for softening the hair. In other words, you're softening it by lightening it a little bit. Lighting it a little bit. Lightening it a little bit. One or the other. Okay, we'll come down with the uh, sable brush. This is a smaller sable. It happens to be, oh, what is that, a number eight. And we'll come over to the flesh color. Let's come to the dark flesh color. Yellow ochre plus alizarin plus white with a little burnt umber. And dry brush. Push this up on the face. Uh, I guess I have to ask in the, in the booth, uh, is my hand blocking it at all? Can you see this or should I be down lower? Just okay. You know, you're a nice guy in there, Booth. I don't care what they say out here. Okay, we push this around. This is all shadows. Come down along the neck, down into the distant shoulder. Even, and I jump back up here just a little bit to the face. You can see how uh, the red shows through a little bit, can't you? Isn't that a bright red? And then we'll go down under for the running back same color. Same color, same brush, and all put in very dry-like. Okay, then we do have two legs that are in shadow. Well, <laughs> two that aren't and two that are. Isn't that great? Two that aren't. The two parts of the same leg is what I meant. Okay, here we go. This comes down, splash against there. You have a little line that divides the, the calf from up at the thigh. Hand bone connected to the knee bone. And then the armpit. Just a little wedge. I'd suggest when you, do, after you get that far with it, take a paper towel, and this is a good paper towel. It's lint free, using the finger just inside of it, and gently touching, smoothing around. And you're also letting a little bit of the underneath uh, show through, the underneath red of the canvas and up at the face. Now the face will do one other thing. I'm going to run down and get some hair color. I've already shown you that, so just stay right there. Hair color coming up. This is uh, where you do not see the eye. See, there's no eye to paint because it's in the shadow. The hair's coming across. A nice choice, Bucky. You did the right thing this time. But you get all the mood without seeing her expression. You get it felt in the character, the tender touch with her hand, and that intent look just with the hair flow in the face. Okay, now what do I want to do? I want to take the um, finger and just wipe a little bit where the cheek's going to be. 
I can sneak a little bit of that hair color down almost like a shadow along the nose so you get a feeling like there's a little form there. That's very subtle. I, I hope that can be picked up. We'll be adding a little lights there too so you'll see it uh, more so. Okay, I'll come down then. Let's take, uh, take the same brush. I'm going to come to the flesh. Let's see, where's the flesh? Yellow ochre and white, the lizard little umber. And I did put just a touch of medium in that. It depends upon your paint. I don't know how dry the paint is that you're using. A lot of it is determined by the white. If it's quite dry, you may have to use a little medium. But I want this to go on sort of dry brush. As you come to the edges, and I'm again needing to soften just a little bit so the feeling is almost melts into the background. Come down along here, push this around. I'll dip down quickly the same color onto the thumb area, into the finger area. And this is very subtle. You're just going to uh, put this in flat and make a couple little uh, strokes to show where the fingers are. Okay, we're coming around the bend. And we'll do the same thing that we did on the uh, earlier dark shadow flesh, we'll take and smooth it around. Now very definitely are you letting some of the pink show through there because you want the feeling of nice uh, blood in the flesh, the vitality of the flesh. I'll soften just slightly with the finger. Did I say that? Soften with the finger some of the places where it's uh, meeting the edge, where it meets the shadow foam. So you find how it looks a little less light, just removing a little bit. Okay, we'll, we'll come with a little bit of a dark uh, flesh color. This was with a round brush, just a teeny touch of medium. And we'll come up, and this will kind of outline the thumb area. And we'll come along the fingers and down along the side of the little finger and a little shadow under the arm just to sort of uh, round it out a little bit. Where you've put it around the thumb, which I'll come back to, we need to just, just a slight zigzag, just for a little bit of form. You need to do the same thing over on this side, just a slight little zigzag to get a little more shadow there. If, if I take some of the sand color from um, down, this just raw burn umber and white, which we've used. I'm using the same brush. We'll come up closely so you don't see those little red spots there. Looks like a little leftover measles. Here we go. Okay, now we'll take a slight thin line. This is with the same uh, dark flesh color, and this is also the same brush. This is your um, round brush, and we'll come up and get in the fingers. Here's the forefinger, forefinger, the middle finger, and the next finger, and just a little teeny finger. Now that, I need to put just a touch of light back up there going right there. You know, I had one person that was painting this picture in a class, and I said, now as you look at that, let's see, let's go this way. You have the thumb, obviously, but then you have the forefinger, the next finger, and I said, now notice how this one is a little taller than this one. They held up their hand and it wasn't so. They were, this one was the same size as that. So you don't always know. You can't make a rule and say, well, this was this, this, this. I've, maybe mine's different. I never thought of that. What's yours like? Hold them up. She's different than me. Okay, well, <clears throat> I'm unique. <laughs> Let's take a, put a little light up on the flesh. And what I'm going to do on the flesh color for in here, instead of using this light color, I'll take some of the hair color. Round brush. This is the light of the uh, hair color. Okay, let's come up. Put this right in there. See how you make that nice cheekbone? And even in thinning it out, spreading it around, you still have some of the red that's there. And, and operates as a collar. 
It looks like you put that in on purpose. Same color, let's come over on the nose just a little bit, right there. And then on the, uh, underneath the nostril, I have to sneak down. What color do we want on that? Do we have anything we can use? Yes, we have just a little dark. This is the hair dark. I'm gonna have to come over here and use just a touch of the blue-black in it. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, I don't know where the burn umber is. If I had burn umber, I could do that. But isn't it nice to be able to make uh, choices without it? Okay, this is a nostril color. Just a little dark accent there, and then a little bit of a dark here, like that, just slightly. I'll take uh, next the mop brush, and the mop brush is going to pick up just a little bit of uh, yellow ochre and white. Dry brush will come up and splat on some highlight. So you want to focus around the arm because that's the introduction to the working unit of the hand. Push that around, isn't that pretty? Blend very well. You're thinking of form, so you can't quite go to the edge. It has the roundness. Bring it down a little bit here. Bring it around a little bit onto here. Okay, now we need to kind of pump along a little bit, so let's, let's put her suit on. We'll take, uh, this is my sable brush, big sable brush. This is a black, blue, and white in a lizard, and that's a shadow color in the suit. Push this on, little dry brush. You can go quite quickly and heavily on this. See, that, that works the same principle where you're letting some of the underneath show, come through and you do it assuredly by removing a little bit of the paint. And that makes us a, a very nice color. The color is enhanced, it has quality, by adding the ingredient of the canvas, which is wiping to get it. Okay, here's yellow, ochre, and white. Same thing that we used on the um, flesh lights. And we'll push this around. This will be just the suit. Ooh, good to have you in a suit out there, Marie. As I push this around, you might notice that I push kind of hard. And what does that do? That makes it so it's not quite as light as if it went on real pure-like. And this is on purpose, so you can come back with just a little lighter light in a few places. Okay, I've seen where uh, we have just a little flesh needed there, so I need to come back with the flesh. Yellow ochre and white and alizarin. Remember, this is the flesh color. I hope I didn't go too fast. I've already used the color before. That's the same thing as up here. Just a little bit on the leg there. I'll take just a speck of dark umber and what I'm saying is this is a burn umber and ochre, and I'll come over with that blue-black again. Just a little accents. Now, we'll watch where I use this. We'll use this right in the division there. Just slightly curve. Soften it just a little bit so you get a little shadow. It needs to be just slightly shaded under the arm. You need to have a little shadow just right where the neck is. Just a little bit where you see some of the armpit on that side just a little bit as it meets there. See, these are all accent points that uh, will push part of the body forward and part back. Now we have to have just a quick little bit of light work go on here. What do we have? We have the fan brush. I'm going to take yellow ochre and white. This is a fan brush, dry fan brush. Up, wham, we're going to put this in, splash up. This is the wave that Marie needs to be a little careful of but she's gonna make it all right. As long as that house gets built, and I'll tell you, that's going to be the determining factor when she comes ashore. See that? Just a big splashy wave. Come a little closer to the head, and then we'll take some of the same thing, same brush, come down in the shore, whoom. See how that's the front sheet of water coming forth? Down here, and a little bit over here, kind of pushing away. Okay, let's take a bunny brush. Now you can come bunny brush. We've been calling you all day. Here we are. Oof. Splash, splash around. Splash around, splash around. And we're getting just an effect out there. She's the main picture, so don't be caught up in worrying too much about whether the ocean looks uh, just anatomically copacetic. Thanks. Now turn the page so I can see the next word over there. 
I'm sure you're not getting that from the booth. <laughs> huh, John? Are you telling her copacetic? Okay, what do we need to do? Quickly, we need to take some um, umber. This is the uh, dark hair color. Umber and ochre. Sable brush. We'll put this up over on here. This gives us our shadows. Oof, that's great. I can feel that thing being built, Marie. You're going to make it. At least one of us will. <laughs> I need to put just little lights on there. I'll take the uh, knife, pat a little bit of the light flesh color on. Can you believe that? Light flesh color on. Zoom. And we can take the fan brush and pat just a little bit of this on. Just splash around. See how you get a little bit of the light of the sand? And then if we take a uh, fan brush, let's take the bunny brush. Quickly the bunny brush, pushing this on, blending around, softening as you go. And then we need to do a couple of quick things. We need to take, and I'll just show you on this. We'll take a uh, round brush, and this is a foam color. You put right on the shovel. See, the whole shovel would fill in like this. We'll have to go just a teeny little touch more. We're going to have to say goodbye to you. But as we go out, I want you to be singing the song. You got to have heart. See the little hearts we're putting on? Marie has heart. You keep heart. I'll keep doing my heart part. Bye. See you next time. <laughs>